Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. We're here again with my partner, John Coleman, and one of our favorite uh, guests, Dr. Liz Lister. Uh, good morning. Good, welcome, Dr. Liz. Thank you. It's good to see you again, and uh, we are still dealing with the coronavirus, COVID-19, and I wanted to ask you a question about anxiety, because Art and I share all the time, we're online like this, and um, we're taking precautions, we're trying to be reasonable about it, but neither of us really are very worried. We might have some health issues, but we're, we're not, we don't have any, any anxiety about getting COVID-19 and dying tomorrow. And I know from experience that there's a there's always a percentage of the population that does over worry. They have that anxiety, just like there's a percentage of the population uh, that will go to the beach at spring break and ignore the fact that there's a virus pandemic, you know. Or, but I'd or like sharks. To address or sharks. <laughs> or sharks. Yeah. Um, I'd like to ad ad have you address the idea of anxiety for those people that are perhaps unreasonably worried about uh, this epidemic. Absolutely. It's adding insult to injury, really, for people to feel anxious and to feel afraid. One of the quotes that I always like and try to remember and try to pass on to others is that anxiety is living in the future. We have no control over the future. We only have control over what we do right now, how we physically distance. We, I like to change the social distancing phrase to physical distancing, social connecting. That's good. That's good. Um, and, and I worry about uh, people who are maybe older, even older than I am. Can you be older than I am, Art? I don't know. No. <laughs> You're stretching. But I, I worry about, I do worry about those people that are uh, isolated, yeah. uh, maybe a little infirm, yeah. and are so worried because the news is all bad. That's, of course, that's what the news does. The news, right. uh, you know, you get headlines because this has happened and that's terrible. And that's, they right. don't tell you the good stuff. Right. Uh, that's right. And they never I noticed the news never tells you the percentage of people who tested negative. <laughs> Only that percentage that test positive. Right. Now maybe they don't know, you know, but my point is that it's easy to get scared uh, of Absolutely. this pandemic. What do you tell people? Is there do you have any first of all, do you have any patients who are fit that category? Uh, definitely. I have lots of patients who are worried and afraid. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't know of any of my patients that have tested positive yet. Uh, I'm not currently performing the test as part of my practice. I don't have a primary practice. It's a consultative practice. So we're, we're waiting because it's not a if, it's a when. And we don't want people to focus on the fear. Okay. For those of us that remember film cameras, there's another phrase that I like, which is what you focus on will develop, okay? And when we focus on the fear, which includes listening to the 24-7 news, that can grow and really feed the anxiety. And that is not good for us. It's not good for our health. It causes the release of cortisol, which is what people know of as the stress hormone. Cortisol causes weight gain, which we don't want, and it causes tissue breakdown. Okay, we're designed to release cortisol if we're afraid of a tiger, and then we run away from the tiger. Okay, and now we're all sheltering in place, or at least most of us hopefully are doing that, so we can't burn off that cortisol. So it's on us to do everything that we can do. And I also worry about people who already were isolated. Okay, I'm spending a lot of I'm spending a lot of time on Zoom with my parents. Okay, now my parents are both doctors and they're both generally very busy people. So I'm kind of chuckling that they have more time on their hands now to, to hang out with me. <laughs> okay, but I thought each of them had to use Zoom and they are 
going nuts with Zoom. They're having coffee with friends now. They are just using Zoom in uh, another of the many online platforms to uh, to connect and stay connected. Glad to hear it. I think we all need to stay connected. And and thank you for your perspective on uh, anxiety. I I think that's good advice. I love the way you uh, uh, you anxiety is worrying about the future. Yeah, and we need to do, we need to take care of ourselves today. We do. We do. Absolutely. And another phrase I read yesterday, and my family's from Argentina. I don't know if you guys knew that. No, didn't know that. Both my parents are from Argentina, so I have a lot of communication. You know, we have our WhatsApp groups, a lot of international communication. So I read something really beautiful just yesterday talking about, it was written by someone who's a, a, a nurse and is treating the coronavirus, the COVID-19 cases that they're having there. And she talked about the fact that they, ha and she said it in Spanish, it doesn't translate that easily, but essentially it's the occasional just releasing of tension, just releasing of the anxiety is a little bit different word. There is a word for anxiety in Spanish, but this word is, it's, it's a little more closer to the word angst, just the feeling that things are not un in our control, which of course a lot of this is not under our control at this point. And she just said that we all just take a moment, whether it's the, the drive home or it's just a pause in a break room for a moment. And even if tears have to come out, that just letting them go, just releasing that, that, that pent up, um, again, hard to describe, like a, a nervousness, a nervous energy. Uh, if you find yourself feeling a little bit sad for a moment, let yourself feel that and just let that pass through so that it doesn't hurt your cells and hurt your body because your body will absorb it if you don't let it out. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. You know, Dr. Liz, I'm a, a positive person. I always see the glass as half full, not half empty. But I do know a lot pe enough people that are negative people. They, the glass is always half empty for them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think for those people... Um, they need the message that things are getting better. They need to believe that things are getting better yeah. uh, and that they will get better. Uh, it's not, we don't have a cure yet. We don't have a vaccine yet. There's a lot of things that still need to be done, yeah. but we are working on it. And I like, I prefer a positive message. Is, is that what you give your patients? Yes, absolutely. One of the, how, and... Another fact is that the numbers are going to increase, and that, that does not mean that the disease is getting worse. What that means is that more tests are being done, and that's a good thing. That's interesting. More, more tests. tests being performed, so we're finding the cases. We're oh, finding okay. people who are carrying the virus, so number one, we can help them feel better and hopefully, please, are going to recover from whatever degree of illness they're experiencing and then, and then come through the other side with developing antibodies and having immunity and then, as you mentioned, ultimately having a vaccine, which, of course, you know, I'm here in Silicon Valley. Tons of biotech companies are developing test kits, working on the vaccine. That's happening not just here in this area but in all parts of the world, right? So... As you say, I'm a very positive person too, and the good side is coming. So that's why I caution people against focusing just on the numbers. If you're going to focus on the numbers, focus on the 90 plus percent that recover and do fine. Right. Okay, varying from, you know, all the way down to over 99 percent in Germany, for example. Wow. Recovering. Okay, and the. The reason for that is testing. I'm on a little bit of a soapbox about uh, that, that that's where we need to be going is ramping up the testing. So I caution everyone to be a little bit careful following the numbers because the numbers are going to increase. That is what they're going to do. And it simply means that we just have to give this the next few weeks. This is not the new normal. This is a temporary normal. Oh, very good. So um, just to follow up on that, so part of the testing is that 
uh, people who are found to be positive can quarantine themselves and not give it to other people. Then they recover, mm-hmm. and hopefully they'll have antibodies so they won't get it again. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Well, everybody's being so positive here. Uh, I, I, not to be out positive thinking, I always consider the class to be totally full. It could be half full of water, but it's also half full of air. And <laughs> so I think the class is always full. Well, Art, you are full of it, aren't you? I am. Well, my glasses. <laughs> so with that, I think we should uh, thank uh, again to uh, Dr. Luz for thank you, Doctor. Uh, Pleasure. Terrific, As always. terrific information, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Likewise. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thank you.